Yes, we are in the second hour of the mid morning show. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Time for us to get straight into our Wiley the Board series this morning. I guess it's already in the building. Yep. Now we all take pride in the traditions and ideals of our senior high schools, but nothing can be compared to the sheer delight and sense of superiority that comes with coveting the most prestigious national science and maths quiz trophy. Today on the Wiley Board series, we explore the life and career of the Matriarch, who has, uh, for the past eight years, brought a lot of innovation and excitement to the quiz and has also extended the popularity and relevance of the program by giving it a strong social media presence, thereby giving it a more active and useful appeal. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts, French and in Spanish for First Class Honours and a Master's of Arts Communication Studies both from the University of Ghana, Ligon and a Master's of Arts in International Affairs, MAIA in Communications and Development Studies from the Ohio University in Ohio, United States of America. Under her stewardship, the National Science and Mass Quiz has formed strategic sp- uh, partnerships, raised the profile of the program, and brought corporate sponsors onto the program in a variety of innovative ways, winning several prestigious awards, such as the award for the best television program 2017 from the Chartered Institute of Marketing of Ghana and Advertising Association of Ghana AAG, 2018 Gong Gong Award, good category for integrated campaign entertainment. AAG 2018 Gong Gong Award Silver Category for Experiential Campaign Entertainment. 2018 AAG Gong Gong Award Silver Category for Media Innovation Financial Services for GCB Money Zone. AAG 2018 Gong Gong Award Silver Category for Branded PR and in Entertainment. In March 2019, she won the Best Achiever in Competitions and Best Achiever in Marketing and Advertisement at the 5th Feminine Ghana Achievement Awards and was inducted into the Ghana Feminine Hall of Fame in September 2019. In December 2020, she won the Millennium Excellence Foundation President's Outstanding Youth Prize for Excellence in Education. Guys, I'm ready. She's here already, guys. Mrs. Nanekria Abuajuan Kumasare is the managing director of Prime Time Limited, my guest today on the Wiley the Board series. We're live on Facebook, guys. Y1079 FM. Search for that and drop a like on us. And of course, join the stream. Share uh, to your friends as well. Tell your friends to tell their friends we're on. We're streaming till the show ends and so you can join in anytime. Join me as we welcome Nane Kriya throughout the interview. Which referred to as Nane Kriya, that's right, right? I said mommy in the beginning and she said mommy's too old for her. <laughs> so we're going to go by Nane Kriya. Good to have you back in the studio. I think the first time we had you on here, good morning. The first time we had you on here was um, after the 20, uh, was it 2020? 2020 NSMQ? 2019. 2019, yes, yes. And then you came in with Professor... Um, Elsie Ifa Kaufman, and then we talked, yes. yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. I remember one thing for sure, right? I remember extending an invitation to a prof to join us on Wiley Double Series. Months after that, she, she agreed to join us. Right. We did her interview, I think, at Airport View Hotel, and then we played the audio after that. Mm. And it's very unfortunate I didn't extend an invitation to you. <laughs> yes, because, you know, the perception is uh, Nanekri is very busy. You can yes, it's it's not easy to grab her into your studio. Yes. And so along the line when management told me we have Nanekri and she's coming to I'm like, bless God. We finally have her to come and share a story with us. It's it's very it's a big pleasure to meet you today. Of course, on behalf of all my listeners, um if I show you the conversations on Twitter now, you'll be shocked. Wow. But I'm gonna keep that for when we are done. There are a lot of people today the, the tweet started somewhere around four AM. Wow. Yes, people tweeting. The thing is I don't know how much the team knows about the impact of the National Science and Mass Quiz on the youth these days, but it's huge. And so when the station posted that we're having you on here, a lot of people turned in. There are questions on Twitter right now. There are people, I didn't even know if people knew that much about you. But it's all part of the reasons why we brought you on here, of course, to come and inspire all of us um, to move extra high in our pursuit of our dreams. And so welcome and thank you so much thank for you. honoring our invitation. Thank you. We're going to start the story off, of course, with your beginning. Um, where did life start for you? Where did you grow up? Well, I was born in uh, Second D. Mm. 
to um, Mr. Peku Mensa Bonsu mm. and uh, now her leadership professor, uh, Justice Professor mm. Henrietta Mensa Bonsu in uh, November of 1980. Okay. That's why I said I'm not that old. Yes. <laughs> It's allowed. <laughs> so I think I think the mummy term has now gone beyond uh, being old. Right. I think I should have said godmother because oh. the, yes, you know, when you achieve so much, regardless of your age, I think the godmother figure has to be added. We have to, you know, push that in there. So I'm going to change. I'm even going to change the details on here. <laughs> I hit godmother and neck here. <laughs> so that was that was where you were born. Yes. How was life like indeed. for you growing um, up? My, my grandparents lived there at that time, mm. and my mother was um, at uh, the Ghana School of Law then, mm -hmm. so it made a lot of sense mm. to have the baby where she could get a lot of mm. help. Mm. And so I, my early years were um, second day in Takra, and mm. then we moved, we came back to Accra after, okay. I think in 1983, after she was called to the bar and mm. settled and all. And so I grew up here in Accra. Mm. Um, I went to, I did my primary education at uh, University Primary School mm -hmm. and uh, Junior Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And then from there, went to Wesley Girls High School Great. for secondary school. And then to the University of Ghana for my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. But in between, you know how we, uh, in those days, we had to wait at home for two years before going to university from senior from secondary school well, oh, that was required then. yes um because there were two batches mm. um one i think was from um the national service i think it's from the revolutionary days mm -hmm. when there was one school year that was gone so remember that the sixth formers mm -hmm. had to do one year of national service mm -hmm. after sixth form before mm -hmm. going to university mm -hmm. the, the sss people didn't do that so that was one year outstanding. Mm. And then I think it was 95, there was a, there was a strike, a nationwide strike. Um, I was three years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so wow. there was another batch okay. that sat at home for, so we, we waited at home for two years. Mm. Um, but it, it was in 2000 that they did a double intake. Mm -hmm. So the 99 batch stayed home for two years but the 2000s I think went in after and then after that they were able to mm. cut it down to one year and mm. then now when you finish you go in the same year but we waited for two years mm. so you had to find something to do so in between I interned at prime time the same prime time that you yes, now because prime time was started by my father mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, so I went I was his personal assistant <laughs> I also did uh, some turns around the departments, mm -hmm. so I, I spent a lot of time at the reception mm -hmm. um, uh, as an admin assistant. I went, I joined the client service team, I joined the, um, the editing studio and uh, learned a little bit about media buying. Mm -hmm. I was being prepped. Well, at that time, we hadn't had a conversation about Yet. my future mm -hmm. and about prime time and how those two would merge. Mm -hmm. But I guess I was being, my mother mm -hmm. told me to go and learn how the money that we, I mean, our living is, how, <laughs> how our living is made. Is made. Yes. Wow. So um, I spent that time interning at, mm. at prime time and um, in order to keep my French and you know I I also did some time at uh, I did a year at Ghana City of Languages mm. and then at um, Alliance Frances. Alliance yes wow and so that keep the, the French alive mm -hmm. and then I started learning Spanish at Ghana City of Languages si. before going to Ligon to continue so you speak you speak french oh i don't speak that many languages you, yeah. you speak french uh, spanish yeah french and spanish my English. spanish is not that good these days from disuse okay. my french is still quite strong but okay. um again disuse i don't uh -huh. have that many people to speak to with. speak with. i try to listen to uh, rfe mm -hmm. radio france and tell us mm -hmm. now from time to time just to keep it up and then i also got some books from my year abroad mm -hmm. that i 
mm. I, I try to read from mm. time to time just so I don't forget. Mm. But then lo local languages, you do speak Fanti as well. Mm. 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 Oh, can can Fanti. Oh, you can Fanti. You can try to can can add in now. Wow. Because I did for Ghanaian language at university primary, mm -hmm. you could choose um, tree as an Asante tree, a crepim mm -hmm. tree, Fanti, Ga, mm -hmm. and ever. So I chose to to do Fanti because mm. my heritage is Fanti. It's Fanti. And uh, except that the more Asante than yeah, Fanti, yeah, yeah, my my maternal grandfather mm. was Asante mm. and my grandmother was Fanti. Mm. So technically we are Fantis because mm. we are matrilineal. Mm. Mm. And my dad is Asante too. So okay. <laughs> there's sense. more Asante. I, I do understand that. Our mother tongue is is Asante, mm -hmm. though we are. My mother calls us Fantis in the diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> Fanti for yes, Anyways, what did you what did you love doing um, growing up? What were some of the things you loved on, on the side? I, I loved reading. I still reading. I still read still a lot, read. Mm. and um, I I I'm, I even I'm even part of a a, a book club. Mm. Uh, it's a Wesley Girls book club. Okay. <laughs> I loved telling stories, so. We had uh, my, my, my sisters and my cousins, we formed a club modeled on uh, Enid Blyton's Secret Seven mm. called the Four and a Half Club. The half was my youngest sister. <laughs> wow. And uh, yes, we, we made it the half because at, I think at that time she wasn't four years old. We kept we kept shifting the goalpost, <laughs> <laughs> making it diff more difficult because you know you know uh, she's six years younger mm -hmm. than me, mm -hmm. and uh, two years younger than the, the youngest member of the, of the group. So you know how younger mm -hmm. siblings tag after the older mm -hmm. ones, and the older ones think they're a bit of a nuisance because yeah. you have to take care of them, yeah. and sometimes they they tell on you. You know you're doing something naughty. They always it's not <laughs> sometimes always. <laughs> The younger ones will always tell you, and, and so, they tend to blackmail you if they want something <laughs> from you. So they don't care going for your sweets whatsoever. You deny them, they will definitely tell on you. Yeah, so, so to, to keep her in check, mm -hmm. we, we always... Uh, Added her. No, no, she, she was a member, but mm -hmm. not a full member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, I mean, you let her enjoy the rights, but yeah, you know, he's yes, not really yes, a part yes. of the team. So we, we put together a play, mm -hmm. and uh, I wrote the play, and we all like brainstormed and mm -hmm. put together the play, and mm -hmm. I wrote it out. Mm -hmm. We rehearsed, and it was, I, it must have been an Easter Monday, or else it was an Easter Sunday. I think it was either 88 or 89. We had, I think it must have been 89. We had the play we put up the play mm -hmm. for my parents and my uncles and aunties they all came to see us and we also got some some visitors mm -hmm. uh, including the league jake obichibi lamte wow was my father's boss at that time my father worked at lintas and um we put up the play the first time i heard the word bravo it was from jake <laughs> <laughs> so we put up the play it was really it was really about um preparing should i say girls for mm -hmm. for for life you know mm -hmm. life skills mm -hmm. kind of thing so it was called ama the lazy girl ama was you know the usual typical story pampered mm -hmm. and she didn't learn how to do anything and, Saturday she, born. and then she got married and then couldn't run her home and it was it was a, a bit of a chaos and Right in the middle of it, my youngest sister, who was the one playing Amma, decided she no longer wanted to be Amma, the lazy Why? girl. She wanted to be Amma, the good girl. That, that changes the story. It changes the story. <laughs> and we had a crisis. So I had to <laughs> call in my mother. Because the guest, so it was behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was adamant. She didn't want to be Amma, the lazy girl anymore. She was Amma, the good girl. Mm -hmm. So my mother had to come and talk to her. And right there, I had to find another okay, so ending mm, okay okay you have change to the, the ending yes change the change story the plot. Mm. so that we could we could um we could finish the play and we did wow. and everybody loved it but i guess that i was that's learning you, to tell you story. Your bravo. yes yes, yes, yes. <laughs> i guess i was learning to tell, tell stories. stories wow and this which is what my job mm. is right now mm. but I, we had we had we had fun you had fun um, growing up we had uh, we had bmx bikes and mm. my, my parents allowed us to go exploring. We moved to Ashalibutri, and at that time, Ashalibutri, in, in the early 90s, mostly, um, uh, should I say shrubs, woodlands, and not completed buildings. It's very developed now. It is. That's where I live. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my office is now. Wow. <laughs> so we used to ride after school, ride, go exploring. Uh, right now, I wouldn't let my daughter do that. <laughs> 
things are changing. But we had a fun, we had mm. a fun childhood. Mm. Mm. We did. Oh, with all these experiences, I mean, did you know where you were heading to career-wise? Did you have dreams? Anything you wanted to become? Um, no, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do. Wow. But just to satisfy people, because people would ask you, what do you want to do? And I'm, after a while, I just got tired of the, the questions. Mm -hmm. So I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. <laughs> because I hated being in the hospital and I hated syringes and I hated the blood, smell the side of, of blood and all uh, that. Yes, the side of and yeah. Izal, the, the yeah. disinfectant that they yeah. used in the hospitals. I, I couldn't stand it. I knew I didn't want to be a doctor or a nurse, but I didn't know what else I wanted to be. So when people asked me, I said, I want to be a lawyer. I said, Oh, uh -huh. like your mother. I said, Yeah. And the matter ends there. <laughs> but I honestly you didn't know didn't what really I know. You just wanted, wanted to go to through the system and. You know, find your feet doing something. I, I guess, I guess so. But by the time I, I finished um, SSS, mm -hmm. I, 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 I thought that I'd like to, I'd like to be a translator. Okay. A bilingual translator. That's what inspired you learning different languages. Um, oh no, no really. I, I learned very early on that it was my strength. Mm. The learning languages. If I wanted to learn languages. A language I would learn it. Mm. I still don't speak Ghana. <laughs> my Ghana, my Ghana only comes out in in crisis situations. Uh -huh. In the office when you because, have to shout at somebody, right? Oh no, no, no! Even then, I don't, I don't speak Ghana. Mm. My Ghana is very limited, okay. so it's only when I must speak it to get out of of some kind of trouble. But that's also because when I was learning to speak Ghana, my friends used to laugh at me. My Ghana friends used to laugh that's at me. And, and one day, I just got upset and. It was not even as if I pronounced it wrongly. It was correct, but they were laughing at me. What, what was the word? Do you remember? I can't remember, but they, they said that coming from mm. me, it sounded funny. Mm. So they were laughing at me, and I found it discouraging. And I told them that even in Accra, I didn't need God to survive, mm. so I wasn't going to learn it. But over the years, I've picked up, and my interest has mm. been rekindled because mm. a lot of people in my office speak mm. God. Mm. You, when you left, feel left out. You feel <laughs> I don't speak too uh, So I, I met my in-law, I think, last week. And I've been in Accra for nine years. I think this is my ninth year. Right. They don't understand why. I, it's not like I can't speak it. I do understand everything they say. Right. But then, just like your experience, there are a few times I say things that people like him, this man, <laughs> will just laugh at me and say, okay, this is not how you say it. So I'll just reserve it. I understand yeah. and I'll just reply in, in, in English. Yes. It's fine. I think yes. we're in the capital city, so I'm allowed yes. to do that. Yes. Let's talk about your days in senior mean. high school. Right. Which senior high school did you attend Wesley, once again? Wesley, yes, Wesley. Wesley. The pride. Oh, Charlie. The pride alone. <laughs> like, it comes with some energy. Tell us about your days at Wesley. The color. The oh, <laughs> unconsciously. I, I, I didn't even think it was so bad. <laughs> Tell us about your days in senior high school. The, the truth is, after after Wesley Girls, every time I see yellow and green, it, it's uniform for me. So oh, wow. I, I I don't you wear stay those. Off them, right? no, yes, yes, exactly. Unless it's for uh, Wesley. What girls kind of students were you back in in Wesley or back at Wesley? Um, I was in the cadet. Okay. Um, I was I was an athlete. I started with um, the sprints because I used to do that mm -hmm. at university primary and then became a high jumper. Wow. And yes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that looking at me. Wow. Day. <laughs> in fact, in my first year at Legon, I was third in high jump at the uh, Interhalls. Wow. Yes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that looking at me today. Uh, I believe yes. since you're telling me, but <laughs> I mean, uh, on sites, you might not really believe it. Yeah. You still have the flair, right? Yeah, if you put on the field, well. you can. Well, I, I, I there are long periods of dormancy, and then I try to be yeah, active yeah, yeah. again and start walking or jogging, uh -huh. and uh, yes. So, um, at Wesley Girls, I, I wasn't the kind of student who would, the, I mean, the always studious mm -hmm. type. I think I learned from there that I didn't like routine. Mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't like a regimented lifestyle where every day at this, this time is you what do you this. Have to do. Every yeah. day at this time yeah. you do yeah. that. I, get that. I, I followed everything, mm. of course. I didn't want to get into trouble. You know, in my first week there, my senior house mistress met me and mentioned my name, my house, and my class. So I knew that she knew me very well. I wasn't about to. And of course, because my mother is an, mm -hmm. a prominent old mm -hmm. girl, mm -hmm. I didn't want information going home that I was misbehaving. So always on my best behavior. Um, but I, I think I learned a lot about myself in terms mm -hmm. of my interests mm -hmm. and my capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that um, 
So in terms of studying, I found that I was one of those who, who didn't like to to do it every day, like yeah, study yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't find me in the classroom after 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 rest mm -hmm. classroom mm -hmm. studying mm -hmm. every day. But I learned that if I was tired, then I couldn't mm -hmm. do well. I, so that, like that if I paid attention in class, and, yeah. yes, if I paid attention in class, that was like eighty percent of of the work done. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, I was thinking girls, you can't be absent from class, but paying attention was important. I was a pretty jovial uh, person. I learned also that I was good at emceeing. So okay. We, we had um, phone tools night, and I emceed the event. Did you have a nickname and back then? So my name was, because I'm a queer and my dad is Kweku, okay. I called myself Kweku Mesa Bunsu Jr. KMB Jr. for short. Because my dad is called, <laughs> is properly called KMB. So, so you, had, you had your dad's name in school. That was yes, your nickname. K wow. KMB. Well, I, hmm, I was one of those who liked to tease people. In fact, we were like a duo in my class. Okay. If the other one liked to give people names, and I made sure it, it would stick. Oh, so you, 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 you were like the <laughs> enforcement officer. She would just make if the you policies, you and then yeah, and make you sure would make sure it, it stays. So, even now, the people, all those who had nicknames mm -hmm. while we were in school, that's why I still call them. Wow. Even now, that's why I still call them. So they tried all sorts, all sorts of things, but they couldn't get the names to stick because I knew what the trick was. The trick is that when they start calling you that, mm -hmm. you give yourself fans. Eventually, yeah. they stop calling mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. Because it's the, the idea is to annoy you. And when you don't get but annoyed, when they realize you've developed tough skin for it, yes, they just give up. They just give up. I, I, but eventually I retained one. Can you guess <laughs> what it was? No. Muta Baruka. <laughs> <laughs> why, and, why, why, why? And the beginning was really simple. So, you know, um, so in form, <laughs> two, in form two, my closest friend, we are family friends. Our mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. are friends mm -hmm. from way back. Uh, Karen Butri was... Uh, uh, she was an interesting. She was an interesting one. Mm -hmm. She wanted. She didn't want to be at Wesley Girls, so mm -hmm. she wanted to uh, find a way to get out. And the only way to get out would be to do something that would. She was send, trying to be stubborn to, and to then, send yeah. her mm -hmm. out. So she died. It was I think from to second term, mm -hmm. the holiday. She dyed her hair gold, and when she came back to school, she refused to cut it. And because she's light skinned, because she's she's mixed race. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we started calling her King Yellow because around that time King Yellow had come. That was, to Ghana. Was, was, was that a wrestler? No. no, 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 the musician, the reggae musician. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, oh, yes. oh, 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 yes. so King Yellow had come to Ghana with Muta Baruka. And you know, King Yellow is albino, okay. and Muta I Baruka, and <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> I think he's also shorter than Muta Baruka. Okay. Muta Baruka is dark. And the two of us were together all the time, so it, and I guess she was, she was King Yellow. You. No, I'm, I'm the, I'm you the, were the tall one. one, okay. So, since she was King Yellow, you are I, was Muta Muta <laughs> <laughs> I resisted it for a while and I saw that the name was getting stuck. So, eventually, when they called me Muta Bar, they would shout, Hey, Muta! Uh. And then I shout, I am the melody. I am the melody. <laughs> your, your days, the, the days <laughs> seem fun. I mean. This was you trying to, to find your feet in, in life and still enjoying. How well did your days in senior high school prepare you for the journey ahead? I mean, before, senior, uh, before you got to uni, what were some of the ideals, the things that you learned from senior high school? Right. So at Wesley Girls, you know, we have certain things that we do. Mm -hmm. And I'm second generation Wesley Girls. So okay. th some of those things are from home, mm -hmm. like, um, like diligence and excellence at everything mm -hmm. you do. I, I, I can't really say that I learned it from Wesley Girls mm -hmm. because it started from mm -hmm. home, but perhaps it was also ingrained into my mother mm -hmm. before um, I, I, I came, I came up, um, mm -hmm. on the scene. Um, we believe, you know, Wesley Girls, you, you have to own up to your mistakes. Mm -hmm. We believe in duty mm -hmm. and responsibility mm -hmm. and care for others and all of those things are, are part mm -hmm. of uh, part of it. I, I did tell you that I learned that I could MC over there from mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and um, I kind of developed not too much, but I MC'd um, some of the weddings of some of my mm -hmm. friends and family, and I think that um, some of the skills I learned there have been helpful mm -hmm. to me in my work because I'm very particular about 
excellence yes. and you don't compromise on quality no if it needs to be done if it must be done it must it be must done be well. done mm. yes if it wow. must be done it must be done and it must be done well mm. not just done mm. i can't stand a mediocre work no. did you miss your days in senior high school oh yes i i i've been pretty active in my old girls association, association in fact um with my year group i was year group president uh, three different times mm. so uh, for a number of years mm. so um we adopted we adopted the interhouses um sports competition mm -hmm. um back in 2012 when i was year group president mm -hmm. and so every year would go back to school around that time and then group yourselves and the, then get involved uh, in sports and activities not well to witness and to, to witness give, okay okay to give okay. prizes because we okay. would sponsor the the event mm. so i've been uh, very much involved in mm. my schools mm. Mm. yes mm. Since, mm. since i left that's beautiful now you 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 hold a bachelor of arts in french and spanish with first class honors yes. uh, as you mentioned yes. um and a master's of arts communication studies i mean all these make sense you had love for languages you, you did a bit of studies before that. You found out you could communicate to numbers along the line as well, and then you decided to pursue it. The decision you made in learning these in uni, was it, was it personal? Did you make the decision yourself? Did your parents join in? Help me understand, or were you the type that was also just given it, given the course, and then you realized you loved it, and then you pursued it, or what? Um, no. I specifically chose to do French and Spanish because okay. I knew from a very early age that I was good at languages. languages. Mm. Uh, case in point, in 1995, after BEC, we mm -hmm. used to stay at home for about five or six months. Mm -hmm. We used to write BEC in August and go to school in, mm -hmm. in February. Mm -hmm. And during that time, my mother, from October to December of 95, uh, she was a visiting lecturer at the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. And she wow. went with me because I was at home doing nothing. And I used to do help her with her research for her books and stuff. Mm -hmm. I came back uh, speaking at least. I, I didn't go to school mm -hmm. while I was there, but I came back with at least a beginner's appreciation of the Dutch language. Mm. So I knew that um, I knew that I, I mean I could count to a hundred or a thousand. I, I knew a lot of words just, just by listening to radio, reading signs, wow. and and. Yes, so I knew very early on that I was good at languages, and if I wanted to learn a language, you I could pick learn it, it. Easy, mm. easily. And so we decided to play to my strengths because I hated math. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. <laughs> we all did. So, so the thing is, you know, right? I think it's because I just, I just didn't understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't understand. You see, how some of us, eh, I tell people the way we are made. You see, God was talking while He was making us, <laughs> and so the whole art of languages the whole art of reading and understanding things are our stronghold yeah. see when you put the calculator and the pen and the yeah. hair see some people when god was making them he was calculating the weather and all that so <laughs> it's in them and if you find your strength in them and i'm very happy i mean today you sit here you've achieved a lot ironically you are pioneering something that you never even loved in the yes. beginning yes. and so it's a yes. blessing i yes. feel when young ones are allowed to explore their strengths Yes. They build on it, and trust me, they'll be able to hold a torch for a lot of things that yes. they never even had the strength to do. Yes. And I mean, big ups, big ups going out to your parents, you. to the people Thank that grew you. up with you. Thank Today you. we sit here, National Science and Maths is what it is, thanks to people like you, and you never even loved it. <laughs> I, I didn't like it. I wasn't good at it at all. Wait, were you watching it at first? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, in fact, I tell people that I grew up on the program mm. because at first we used to go after school to mm. go watch it. Mm. And then when I interned at, at prime time, mm -hmm. so um, January of 99 to December uh, to July of 2000, because I went to school mm -hmm. in, in uh, August of 2000. That's mm -hmm. when I went to Lagos. Yeah. Um, I was a production assistant on the National Science and Maths Quiz and on, on, on other TV programs mm -hmm. that um, uh, Prime Time was was um, mm -hmm. involved in mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. time. Let's speak English. Yes, yes, um, yes. I remember that one. Yes, Kitty Quiz. Yes, I was a production assistant on all of these. Mm -hmm. And for the National Science and Maths Quiz, I used to help uh, Prof. Ramadi with her her clothes and her makeup. Wow. I used to do the makeup for the contestants and make sure that the production crew had their their food, their drinks and water and everything else that they needed. Uh, I used to run errands for the team 
Um, so I, I say that I grew up on it because from going to watch, then working on it, and mm -hmm. now actually running it. Running it. Yes. Wow. That's, be that's, be that's a very beautiful story, you know. Let me ask, right, the first day you decided to go out to work with Dad and, of course, find where the money comes from, uh -huh. did you ever see yourself handling affairs? Well, I think at that time uh, the, the conversations had kind of begun. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to be a bilingual translator. Yes, so that was the main focus. Yes, that mm. was my focus. And that's why I kept up with the French and mm. Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, there was a long conversation <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't like very much. I had so I did a year abroad in France yes. in uh, Caen, University de Caen, which is in Lower Normandy. Mm -hmm. This was while you were in uni. I'm sorry. This is while you were in uni, right? So year after abroad. level three hundred, mm -hmm. yes, you go mm -hmm. for year mm -hmm. abroad, and so I had the opportunity to go to France. And even when I was coming back, I didn't even uh, close my bank account. You left everything running. Yes, I converted it into a student savings account because I intended to go back. You knew you were going to go back. I intended, mm. to, fully intended mm. to go mm. back. Uh, my national service was with the. Um, it was a program by the French embassy back to then. teach functional French mm -hmm. or professional French mm -hmm. to um, in state agencies. Mm -hmm. So I was at the police headquarters the mm -hmm. CID headquarters mm -hmm. we had a small office there and because we were the early batches we, I was in the second batch of mm -hmm. that program we were putting together the training materials mm -hmm. for the teaching of French in the police service mm -hmm. so from time to time I'd go to the police depot to have a class to test the materials yeah. and come back and fine-tune we were working with some uh, police uh, commissioners retired uh, Commissioners of Police, uh, French, yeah. retired police commissioners of police. So uh, everything I had done up to that point was to be able to go back and mm -hmm. do a master's there. Mm -hmm. And my mother said no. Did she explain to you why? She said that um, Europe boxes you in very early mm -hmm. and you do not have an opportunity to explore. I can understand with her American mm -hmm. education, Ivy League education, I'm sure she... <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't ready to help she you experience yeah, anything so, otherwise. So she asked me to, forced me, not mm -hmm. even asked, mm -hmm. to, to apply to schools in mm -hmm. the U.S. I did it quite half-heartedly. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I also applied to do communication studies at Legon because I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. In actual fact, for the... For the um, the GRE, because I had yeah. to write GRE. Um, I had only one month to prepare. Mm -hmm. You know how I do, how well I do with maths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how well? I, that's that's how, well. how well? <laughs> let me tell you how well. So let me take you back to, to uh, my SSS results. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to touch on that, but since you want us to talk about it, fine. <laughs> no, I just want to tell you how mm. well. All the, all the while, while I was preparing to write the, mm -hmm. the SSC as it was then, mm -hmm. my parents never told me, get an A, get mm -hmm. an A, get an A. They were like, Nana, all you need is an E. How? Because if they knew I'd do very well in the other mm -hmm. subjects, mm -hmm. but they were like, with math, At because least. it's a core subject, Please. if you get an F, you have to rewrite. Yeah, you yeah, can't go yeah. to university. That's true. If, if you get an E and your other course, um, results are mm -hmm. strong enough you can still go in mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. worst case scenario we could even do um um because you know there's there's some sort of um what do they call it i've forgotten the term now but for the university um lecturers or the university workers there's uh, some sort of a uh, concession staff concession staff, yes, yes, yes 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 they told me that that if i got an e they'll be able to get you in i could get in I may not get the course I want, but or I wouldn't. I may not have got the courses I wanted, but I could still get mm -hmm. in. But with an F, I'd have to rewrite. And then miracle so happened. So they all told me, Nana, just an E is all you need. Just make sure. Just that's all you just need. Just strike an E for Just us. get an E. And my my best friend did. Uh, she was a science student. Mm -hmm. In fact, we met around the same time. She made sure that after rest hour every day. Uh, her name is Audrey, Audrey Jampo. Shout out to her. <laughs> I always credit her with that, with that success. She made sure that 
every day after rest hour, mm -hmm. she'd she'd we'd sit and work some maths. And sometimes at Dodger, she'd look for me. The password. <laughs> so we would work out the maths and. So when the results came in, even before they go to the school, because of the science and maths quiz at that time, um, we were working, Prime Time was working with the um, secondary mm -hmm. education division. So my dad was in his office when he got a call from the director, secondary education, that the results are in. Your daughter did so well. Wow. And my dad was like, what did she get in math? math. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she e? said, "SC." Wow. We believe we chat, we chat, we chat. That was, th yo, this is this is very inspiring. I won't, I won't even lie. And then he called the house. It was it was just about ten o'clock or eleven o'clock on that day. He called the the mm -hmm. landline and said he was drinking his beer already. Oh wow! Because. <laughs> They were expecting a, an E, and you got a, and you I didn't got even a get a C. D. You got a, a C. I got a C. Wow! So, <laughs> so that explains why you said how well you did with that. And, I, and at that point, I had decided that the, I wasn't going to have anything to do with maths again. I was just you, going to move away it. from maths mm, as much as mm, possible. Mm. So when I went to to university, I didn't even want to take any social science mm -hmm. course because I'd have had to do um, um, what, what, uh, basic stats. Yes. And I didn't want to touch that. It was a UGRC uh, back then, right? I'm sorry? It was a required course. It was a required course yes. if you did social sciences. Yes, and my mother said my, my background would be too weak mm -hmm. and insisted that I do peace science. Mm -hmm. So I did, for my first year, political, um, science. political science, theater arts, French, Spanish. And then I dropped theater arts. And then maintained that. Even though I had wanted to drop the peace science. Hmm. Because I was afraid of basic stats. I did basic stats. What I did to pass, I actually got an A in it. Wow. I worked every day after, after <laughs> lectures. Every day. And my friends always uh, tease me that that was the only time they saw me serious in, in, in class. In, yes. That in my whole life, that's the only time they saw me seriously studying every day. I was never one of those. I, I picked my moments, but they were always high impact mm -hmm. moments. So I always tell when I meet students and I'm talking to them, I tell them, no, man, know thyself. <laughs> no, man, know thyself. No, man, know thyself. <laughs> if you know that you need 10 mm. hours to get through a book, Get it. Make sure you give yourself ten those hours, 10 mm, hours. Mm. And if you know that you study best in the morning, do it. Prime yourself to do mm. um, your work in the morning. If you know you're a night person, make arrangements to do that. Mm. Don't follow the crowd mm. because what works for them mm. won't work for you. Mm. I'm very happy here at this moment. I mean, because I sort of like share similar experiences throughout. Right. Back in senior high school, I mean, I was a guy that would. MC shows. I was playing basketball. I was a prefect. Same time, I was good with the read language, uh, the read courses, right. the social studies, the the science. Even science was fine for me until we got to biology. Uh -huh. You know, having to do math along the line, the calculation. But the I never really loved it, and so right. I was almost always uh, attacked by my elective math teacher. Mm -hmm. He was the same guy that I was teaching uh, core math. Uh, okay. Samala Diaba. Yes, I can mention. I can boldly mention his name now <laughs> because I. I, I know I, I didn't let him down. Right. So he would come to class, and then after class, he would just point me and say, you, you are famous on campus. You think you are a jet. Wasi will weaken you. <laughs> so I was so afraid so much that the, the, the subjects that I was very good at, I mm -hmm. never really touched on it. I would mm -hmm. just brush through it. Mm -hmm. But every single day, Mm -hmm. the, the, the math, the e maths and core maths, Pascal was my best friend right. at some point. And right. so right. the whole Wasi that I wrote, my main target was the two. The core maths. maths and the e maths, and, maths yes. and then after the results came i had a b in both which right. was very surprising because right. and for the first time in my life so this is what i would do back in senior high school you know you'd have to do the required ones and then choose extra four in one part and then some two in another part mm -hmm. i would just do the required ones mm -hmm. and then pick one one so i won't do the rest for you oh, and i always I tell my friend see I can do but it, that, but I won't do it for punching, them. right? Yes. I never did that. I just pick. I just pick the ones that I like. Oh, right. And then I'll do it. And the results will come out. Either get an E or a D. Uh, but miraculously, yes, miraculously, what's the results came and I'd had B in both. And I'm like, how? You mm. see, I didn't really believe in what I could do. But I think the fear, mm. I guess the fear in that, mm. the fear in disappointing people, the fear in yes. failing myself yes. got me to do extra in there. And I mean, to everyone listening, if you find yourself in any position like that, just, you see, focus on the one you're afraid of. 
and you'll be able to kill it. Like, it will really work. I got to uni to... But no punching. Though. No punching. <laughs> <laughs> no punching. It, because... it doesn't work for everybody. No, it doesn't. And, and in fact, in my year mm -hmm. with the maths, mm -hmm. in my year, that's the 98 mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. group, yeah. if all those who punched had issues, mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't, I, I was terrible mm -hmm. at the subject, so I wasn't going to punch. I studied everything, everything. Mm. diligently. Mm. Mm. Because if I had done the punching, I probably would have would have failed. Left. Yes, you would yes. have. You would have. And, and uni, my uni days were, so the SHS days actually built me so much that when I got to uni, uh, the only issue I had was which one to drop. I had geography, uh, economics, and then political science. Right. And then these three were all good, but the economics. But I kept that, oh, okay. and I was able to pass. I mean, I sit here with a bachelor's degree in economics and political science. Gladly. I mean, thanks to all the people that helped me throughout. You, you, after that, you went to study in the United States of America. That was your yes. first time in the USA, right? Yes. Tell us about your days out there studying, how life was back then, how challenging, if you ever found yourself in any challenging position. Tell us. It was a very tough time in my life. Mm. Um, tough because I had done, just done a master's here mm -hmm. at Legon. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't even submit, I submitted my, my thesis for mm -hmm. the Legon, um, the Legon masters mm -hmm. in my second term there. We used to run, well, Ohio University at that time didn't run the semester program. Um, program. Mm -hmm. They run the quarter okay. program. Okay. So there were four quarters That's and four you could do year, only yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can you can dodge one. You can do any three. three. Okay, yes. Okay. And um, so it was in my second quarter there that I submitted my thesis. So you can imagine that it was the pressure. It was terrible. I would have to um, after after lectures, mm -hmm. I'd go to the library and do my assignments. Mm -hmm. um, if you know anything about about um, about America, it's like. When, you, when you're outside the, the cities, you need a car yeah. to move around. Upstate, because the, upstate. The, yes, the, the, the transportation mm. network outside of the big cities yeah. is not great. It's so not like it is in the downtown areas. Yeah. Not at all. Mm. And I didn't have one. And I lived on, on a hill because um, Ohio is in Athens, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm, Appalachia. Mm -hmm, there are mm -hmm, lots mm -hmm. of hills and all of that. And so I had to make sure that I, I didn't miss the bus for my, mm -hmm. my estate. Because if I missed it, then I'd have to walk all the way back home and up the hill. Did you have to walk at any point? I, I walked everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it, it, to go to Walmart, it was more than three miles away. We'd walk there and walk back with our stuff. <laughs> wow. It's... it's um, it was very tough mm -hmm. so i'd go to the library and i'd make sure that i didn't miss the bus mm -hmm. i'd go home sleep for a few hours wake up and go sit behind my computer my computer to do my thesis mm -hmm. my thesis mm -hmm. for legon <coughs> and there were times and we were running the quarter system so mm -hmm. it's like 10 weeks mm -hmm. when you start one blink your first blink and and you're already in the middle writing uh IAs. wow <laughs> the next minute you blink you are at the end of the, the, the quarter and you are writing your finals. Mm -hmm. It was really difficult mm -hmm. combining mm -hmm. the two. But I didn't want to be, I didn't want to submit late. And I knew that if I didn't force myself within the first few months to get the work done, I was never going to finish mm -hmm. it. There were times, I kid you not, there were times when I slept for only 30 minutes in a 26-hour period. 30 minutes? 30 minutes in a 26-hour period. That's not sleep. Five minutes in a 24-hour period. That's not sleep. Be it was crazy. Because I had to get my papers done. Wow. I had to write my papers, and I had to finish the thesis. So sometimes when I... Uh, so if my, if, my, if my office, if the prime time people are listening to me now, they will say, say, ah! That's, that's, why. Why she, <laughs> that's why she doesn't sleep. <laughs> wow. That's why she stays up all night and makes us stay up also mm -hmm. to finish mm -hmm. work and so on. Yes, mm. I, I had to do that to survive. Mm. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have finished mm. the thesis. So what pained me most about it, because I was also because I was taking on so many credits, mm -hmm. and uh, luckily for me, I didn't have to work. That was uh, the agreement we came to that um, 
with my parents mm -hmm. that they would support me through so they I would could finish through, that, so yeah, that, yeah. That, that thesis because it wasn't going to be possible. Because if work had been added to it, it would have, it would have it broken would have your back then, yeah. It would have been impossible to finish mm -hmm. the Ligon one and my mm -hmm. mother wanted mm -hmm. me to finish mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But overall, the experience tiger was... Mother. <laughs> <laughs> tiger, tiger mother. moms are like yeah. that. They make sure you get your... O over, your overall, your you, you love the experience in America, right? I did. You did. I, I found time to be secretary to um, the African Students Union mm. um, we put up events. Mm -hmm. I choreographed events and, and you danced. Emceed some, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and danced and um, you know performed. Yeah, African uh, dances and African all that. dances yeah, yeah, and so yeah. on at, at the events. Mm -hmm. um, we did uh, an international students yeah. fair, and I, I made Achomo. What's what's the English name of Achomo, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you're listening, if you know the English name for Achomo, <laughs> let me know. Okay, we need it. We I need it for the something. Nigerians call it Chin Chin, but I don't know what the Ghanaians want to call it. So the Chin Chin is a brand. Oh right. They package okay. it. Yes, okay. it's it's okay. like they are in Katia Boga. Oh. You right. know, yeah. Right, so right. I think I think the scholars have to come to work and then you know find I, I, an English name for Achomo. Yes. So I made Achomo and well. Sweet Bad. And oh yes, yes, yes! <laughs> wow! And we saw that, and we made a lot of money <laughs> in America. <laughs> yes, I, I, my it was my grandmother's uh, mm. specialty, my mm. maternal mother, uh, your grandmother. She used to send us um, a trauma nicely labeled. She was a school teacher, so yeah, the, the <laughs> nicely labeled. Everybody would wow. have this to all the, her children and grandchildren. So um, while I was at Wesley Girls, mm -hmm. she would send me, at the beginning of the term, mm -hmm. she would send me some trauma. And my mates liked it so much that um, I, the first few times, I didn't get any to eat at all. They, all, they ate all they of it, it all. So I'd hide some of it and then share the rest so I could. How, um, how long did you stay in America? Two years. Two years. Yes. But I came home every, every holiday because mm. I was determined not to stay. Mm. You were determined not to stay. No. And so nothing, I, would, I have, had enough, nothing would have kept you there. No. I had had enough experiences with uh, living outside to know that it wasn't for it wasn't me. really for you i hated the weather <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure it's America, winter right could... ohio hmm. there was one particular night i missed the bus it was my first year i missed the bus um and i had to walk all the way up to my my estate hill. the hill the hilltop estate hmm. the hill even from the library mm -hmm. was a 20 minute walk wow fast paced 15 to 20 minute walk mm -hmm. and then go up the hill and my dad called me as i was walking mm -hmm. it was minus 12 they, degrees they call one part of ohio cool, cool cool cleveland ah, yeah. ah cleveland yeah. is, is up, yeah, up there yeah mm -hmm. i think it's lower mm -hmm. i don't know so it was minus 12 degrees fahrenheit and i was walking in it to get home and as I was climbing the hill, so my dad called me as I was walking, and he said he was going to keep me company mm -hmm. through, the, through uh, yeah. the, the walk, because he wanted to make sure that I'd get home safely. Mm -hmm. And so I started climbing the hill. The, now, the path which was near the road, the, mm -hmm. the, the quicker side mm -hmm. was very steep. Mm -hmm. The gentler slope was on the other, other side. side, and it would have required me going not only a longer, uh, taking a longer mm -hmm. walk, but that side was a bit dark, mm -hmm. so I was afraid. Uh, black girl walking <laughs> alone for all obvious and reasons. Exactly, I didn't want to take chances. Mm -hmm. I'd had enough mm -hmm. experiences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to know that uh, it's not a good idea <laughs> to work alone at night. So I tackled the steeper part, mm -hmm. and there were all these rich kids driving up their cars. They knew us, they knew me because yeah. we used to take the same bus to lectures mm -hmm. and back, but no one gave me a ride. And when I was like three quarters or almost at the top of the mm -hmm. hill, I, mm -hmm. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. I started loosening up my, my jacket. Mm -hmm. I took off my scarf. I loosened up my, my I, I, I couldn't breathe. Wow. So my dad was saying, hello, hello. I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to die there. So I, 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 I had always known that... Staying in Abruzzo was not yours. No. Mm. Year abroad in France, um, and my other experiences, I knew that I didn't want mm. to live there. But it definitely gave you an insight into how life was outside Ghana, of course. Definitely. You know, I'm definitely. sure now that these days, a lot of the decisions you make, you 
you make based on the things that you experienced out there oh. you know, how you improve on things and definitely all that. Yeah. definitely it was an eye-opener mm. it was mm. an eye-opener mm. for me in mm. many ways mm. it was an eye-opener yeah at yeah. what point did family come in your own family so i got married to um dr evans uh teacher in 2013 okay and we have two daughters beautiful daughters <laughs> <laughs> very beautiful daughters smart too they are yeah, really very, really very smart. smart they're really really smart and uh so i have a six-year-old mm -hmm. and a four-year-old mm -hmm. and um yes in many ways my world my world revolves mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. them do, do they know who you are like your, your 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 children do they know how how busy you are how famous you are yes because they have to live with it <laughs> <laughs> are they also involved in in prime time activities like you were back then oh they're too young they're too young for but that. um but the older one likes to sing at a, a christmas uh we, we have a small mm -hmm. christmas um uh, is it a party or a show or something because we, we do have a christmas carol competition okay at inter home. interdepartmental Christmas carol at, at, at work. At prime time. At okay. prime time, okay. yes. We, we call it Christmas mm. at prime time. Mm. So we have a competition, mm. and then we have lunch, and she likes to sing uh, there. Wow. So the last one and the one before, she sang mm. a Christmas carol. How is a typical day life for you? When you wake, what time do you wake up? Um, do you still work out? When you go to the office, how many hours do you spend there? What time do you get home on a regular? I don't have a typical you, day. You don't like... Re remember, I yes, don't like yes, yes. regimented... I don't have a typical day. Mm. But I, I try to make sure that um, whatever work I have to put in mm -hmm. uh, gets done. If it means sitting up all night or yeah. morning mm. Mm. to do whatever proofreading mm. or editing or whatever it is I need to do, mm. that it gets done so get my done. team can meet their targets. Um, things have changed a bit over the corona. Mm -hmm period mm -hmm. because my children are following online school mm -hmm. and I have to keep an eye on that as well mm -hmm. so um, most mornings I will um, supervise a bit before I leave mm -hmm. for work so depending on what my workload is I might get to the office at 9 or 10 or 11 mm -hmm. depends mm -hmm on what I have to, or if i have to go to a meeting in town at nine then it means i'm out yeah, of the house yeah, at six yeah. it, it just depends on what i have to do but i try to organize my life as best as i can mm -hmm. such that i can keep an eye on them mm -hmm. because they are they are a bit high strung and uh, <laughs> i get it <laughs> To keep an eye on them and also get my work get done. Get your work done. Yes. But, but, uh, it doesn't get mixed along the line, right? Oh. You've had times like that? It, 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 it does. Mm -hmm. And when it does, I'm actually the one who suffers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because um, when you're trying to be there for everybody, mm -hmm. you are not there for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get so, that. Yes. What was the first lesson mother who taught you? That you have to take care of yourself first because you can't give when you don't have it you will mm. break down mm. because mom, mommy never gets a holiday can we repeat that you can't <laughs> give when you don't have it no if you don't have good health you can't you ensure can't. somebody is, is no. healthy no that makes sense oh, you, you can't give what mm. you don't have mm. so if you're going to be be giving energy mm. or strength to someone you must have mm. some of it mm. yourself mm. before mm. you can give out mm. if you don't take good care of yourself you don't take good care of your health you then you are not going to be there for them mm. so i'm working mm. i'm working it's a work in progress mm. i'm working on that how important is family life to you with the utmost importance mm. um uh we're a close-knit family mm -hmm. And I'm speaking especially about my maternal side. We are a very close-knit family. We, are, we even have a, a, WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group, group right? and we are <laughs> constantly in touch with, with each mm. other. We, we have a family hymn. We, Is it? Yes. Is it like a family secret or we can hear it? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's MHB 11, with yeah. gladness we worship. Uh. Okay, so you guys season. have adapted that as a family hymn. It's a family, and we sing it a cappella okay. whenever there's a. Is it? Yes, whenever there's a uh, a family mm -hmm. event. So when we have uh, a wedding mm -hmm. or a funeral or mm -hmm. any other event mm -hmm. in between, we have. Um, uh, you can always be sure that on the on, on Christmas Eve on twenty fourth night mm -hmm. we'll be together. Mm -hmm. We have a family, mm -hmm. and we've been doing this. 
Ah, uh, since maybe 93, 92, 95. I, don't, I can't even remember. But uh, as far back, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So we are very supportive and very mm -hmm. close in this. I know that um, any one of my aunties and uncles and cousins who is available at this period is, is listening is listening in. We support each other. In mm -hmm. fact, the, the, the Banfo family instituted an award wow. for the... So, for the NSMQ, there's an award mm -hmm. to the, the uh, it's called the Most Impressive Run, the Jacob and Elizabeth yeah, Banfo yeah, yeah. Award for the Most Impressive the Run. Family. Yes, so Jacob and Elizabeth Banfo were my maternal mm -hmm. grandparents, mm -hmm. and they were teachers. Mm. So my uncles and aunties um, got together with my, 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 with my mom and so on. They got together mm -hmm. and instituted that award in memory of, mm -hmm. of their mm -hmm. parents to encourage the school. So like a grade C school that mm -hmm. goes the farthest in the competition mm -hmm. wins the, and it's to the teachers of to that teachers school. As well. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. actually to the teachers of that school. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, I think, I think last at the 2020 edition, it was a cash price of uh, 10,000 Ghana CDs. I remember, yeah. To the school that goes the farthest mm. in in um, at, at the NSMQ. Mm. Yes. Aside, aside so that's reading, that's the kind of support. Yeah, you very part of very supportive, family. personal mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. business wise. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are very supportive very beautiful family i'm just i'm just picturing how things work the structures i love the fact that it, it, it sounds like there's, there's structures in there like there, there's a family secretary there's a family there <laughs> yeah, if you guys need an extra service i'm gonna be the family MC, so you know, to make that out. anyways and so um i still want to find out from you uh, mm. still on on family and your personal life aside mm. reading you mentioned mm. that reading is one of your your favorite things to do yes. you love theater obviously yes. um aside those what do you do for fun uh if you have a typical day off and and you want to have fun what, what are you most likely to do um play music sing and dance uh my kids and i do that all the time in fact two days ago um i was showing them uh, some music from way back so my mother told me that when she was in form one uh, they used to dance to this song, um, Kung Fu Fighting and uh, Rock the Boot. Yeah. <laughs> so I taught them how to do the bump. Yeah, we were yeah, doing the bump. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. So we do that. We take walks. Mm. Um, I'm teaching the other one how to crochet. It used to be my favorite pastime in my mm -hmm. uh, secondary and university years. I used to crochet. Um, it's a business now. People make crochet, um, swimsuits, and all that. Yes, out of it. yes, uni, yes, I've yes. I didn't. Do develop, it's very time-consuming. Yeah. I cannot combine it. But with one thing I respect about people who are able to do that is the focus. The, the, they're able to really focus. Yes. Because it seems when you miss one, the whole thing is messed up. Yes. You mm -hmm. might have to because even if you don't spot it and you try to correct mm -hmm. somewhere, you mm -hmm. might have to come back and undo come everything back to and, and, mm -hmm. and, and and fix that right one. So mm -hmm. as soon as you make that mistake, you correct it because it will affect mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. uh, later on. But yes, it used to be my mm -hmm. my my passion. I had all sorts of stuff. I'd go to a friend's house and if I saw a mat or something, just I'd go it, it, yeah. study it, yeah. and then start and, weaving and, yours. Yes. Mm. So I'm teaching my daughter how, how to, to do, do that. that. All right. Mm. Three minutes past uh, 11. We are in the third and final hour of the mid-morning. This is Y107.9 FM. If you want to be a part of the conversation, the hashtag is Y Leaderboard Series. She loves this. We might just do the moves, guys. Might. If you are watching us on Facebook, kindly share this. If you're not part of it as well, facebook.com forward slash y1079fm. And then okay, might just teach me a few moves on this. Can we do it? Will you teach me? Let's go. Those kids were fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. But they fought with They were chopping them up. They were chopping them down. Yeah, <laughs> wow, guys. You should see the other folks when they yeah. do it. They bend and, they bend and, and, bump and uh -huh. then they get up and bump and turn on the side and bump yeah. and all of that. Those were their days. Yes, yes. And because, because especially my maternal family, we're so close and we have mm. our, our um, 
our parties mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh, gatherings when we our favorite part is mm -hmm. the, the old school part because mm -hmm. that was what they yeah, grew yeah, up yeah yeah, yeah. so oh. i'm very much on wow uh, we, we, we lost our breath also. <laughs> we need a moment my, to catch our breath guys yes, wow my, my cousin says when you sit in my car all my music is dated <laughs> <laughs> Old school music, <laughs> but but these days you, you listen to songs that are played on radio and that right. You have favorites, um, any particular ones that you love. I remember I think the day you I'm came. I'm a Kojinchi fan. Your Kojin, the day you came, I think you requested for a kiddie song. D did I? I remember very well. Okay. I remember very well. I wanted you to request a song for your staff at prime time, and you requested for a kiddie song. I remember very well. Oh really? Okay, I can't. Did you love kiddie you. songs? Oh yes, I like I like kiddie songs. It was Adia Pena or one of them. You requested for a particular song. Mm. No, if I were to request a kiddie song, I'd most say likely... Cheese. I'd say cheese is not bad. I most likely would like uh, Say You Love Me. I just like the hey, one. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember yeah. that one. I like, I, like, I, like, I like some of the new mm, mm. new artists, but um, I'm a Kojinchi fan. You're a Kojinchi fan. Anything Kojinchi. In fact, you love. Um, yeah, any, anything Kojinchi works for me um but i i my favorites mm -hmm. are um Adon maya um then tom and jerry um, no not tom and jerry i i uh Adon Wape. i love oh, wow. it also has memories mm -hmm. close memories mm -hmm. for 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 me i remember that um when we went to for year abroad okay and we were so homesick so because it was a um, school program mm -hmm. uh, some of my mates there were 18 of us mm -hmm. uh, there and we were so so homesick so i had a little money i went and bought a a, a radio a sound, sound system, system. <laughs> and everybody heard about it that very day so they said they were coming to to have a party wow they were coming to my my room to have a party and one of us had he was a serious uh Kujunji fan mm -hmm. he had he had the cd the but he didn't have the radio to play okay. that was that was the the tom and jerry um Era. Uh, the, the CD. CD. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And and when he put it in and we started playing, oh, we burst into tears. It was, the such, DJ, yeah. it was such you an emotional uh, it was such an emotional moment. Mm. It was. It was. And our favorite song was Odawapi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love I love mm. Um, Miniwara, mm -hmm. that was actually, yeah, 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 that was yeah. actually, um, These are very the good song songs. we mm. used for the couples mm. for my wedding, the mm. couple's first dance. Okay. Was Minora. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I love, that, I love, he's very poetic and, mm -hmm. um, I love the way he puts things so that, um, it, it's romanticized. Mm -hmm. So even when he's speaking about, um, uh, yeah. You know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> he, he's not raunchy. Yes, he's yes. He's very able to, stylistic. He's able to keep it clean. He, yes. And so, at the same time. He, yes, exactly. Mm. And I love, right. I love that about him. I love that. The, uh, the, the, the Academy just sent me an email oh. and they want you to pick one of the songs you will sing for us before the show ends. Wow. <laughs> so just choose one. Let us know. We'll play the intro which, for which you. Song? Any of the Kojanchi songs. Hey. <laughs> Organs. <laughs> the academy just said the academy they don't play oh. hey. they just sent why did the board series academy they just sent an email that um Nanekia should sing one of her favorite songs before the show and so you have time you have like mm -hmm. an hour to you know rehearse in your head and then you know we'll get to that you were mentioning that you, you, you love uh, pat thomas as well yes i love mm. pat thomas it's but the song that i love of his is a very old song and okay it's again uh, there's an emotional tie to that mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother loved that song too and i remember that whenever i played she would be tapping mm -hmm, mm -hmm. her ring mm -hmm. on it and keeping me so every time i hear the song i remember on, yeah. where we lived yeah. at that time when she visited and i remember her tapping along. Should react to that uh, uh, um, i think it's called a uh, mm -hmm. i think i haven't heard that but yeah. can't you definitely it's an get old it song. it's a an Oh, it's not yeah, for one. I'm a comfort power to we oh, never That's it, right? <laughs> Gun is always up to the task. We really love that. And so uh, these are some of your favorites. We'll get yeah. to that in a bit. But I love all kinds mm, of music mm, mm. and I love jazz. Mm. Uh, my favorite is El Clou. I take oh, I take Ooh. those music takes from mm -hmm. from my dad. Mm -hmm. I love El Clou, Dave Cause. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who else can I think about? Um, oh, um, Kenny G. Mm. I love I I love jazz. You're a jazz person. Yes, all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. I love rock mm -hmm. because um, you know Ohio is in. Uh, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's not a very black a area. area. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I rock like. And roll is yes, nothing, yeah. I have. There are some rock songs mm-hmm. that I like. There are some um, uh, soft rock, pop, mm-hmm. R and B, mm-hmm. hip hop, uh, even reggae. But I don't like everything reggae. Mm-hmm. I like specific Bits and songs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, during our time, right, we'll say, you know, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, you know, you know, I love a little bit of everything. So I think that would be the time. Like, yes. Nanekia knows what's up. I know what's yeah, up. Yeah, you yeah. know what's up. You know what's going on. Classical music. Yeah. I, I, and um, my grandfather was also very much into mm. classical mm. music. So there are certain pieces, like when mm. I hear the arrival of the Queen of Sheba, mm. I always see him in my, and uh, mm. Zadok the priest, mm. I always see him in my mind's eye whistling along. Wow. I, I can't whistle, but I try to whistle <laughs> <laughs> because You of try me. your best. <laughs> yes. Th- right. this, is, this is beautiful. I mean, I'm loving it. I have goosebumps now because the thing is, you see, with the kind of work that people like you do, um, a lot of us feel to understand that you have your personal life. Like you do, you do things like we do. Really? I mean, you have your moments, you have your fun moments. But I know a, a lot of even your workers will be shocked at the kind of things that they are hearing, I'm today. hearing like, today. Oh, yes, my love is really that cool, you know. <laughs> and that's the point. <laughs> that alone is inspiration for us. And so yeah. a lot of people, at least they will, know I love to dance. Yes, a lot of people <laughs> will break their backs, won't even have time for themselves. You know, they look up to you and then they get to hear that oh, you actually have time for yourself. You actually do dance. Yeah, you, it does. You, it's fine to dance. It's fun to, to be a busy person and yes. to have a good personal life. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, that, that's very beautiful. L- let's come back yes. to... Oh, with, um, with Kenny G. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which one is Your my favorite, favorite, right? But do you have any El Clue? El Clue, uh, if you play... Um, uh, I have so many of them. You should, you should be a DJ, you know. <laughs> yeah. Actually. Okay. Actually, one of the things that I learned about myself when I went to Ohio mm-hmm. was that I could DJ. Wow. Because I could read the crowd and see what they responded what they, yeah, to. Yeah. So we'd have an African. I remember the first one. We had an African Students Union party, and or international students in party, and the DJ was playing music that he liked. And I went up to him and said, you know what, if you play this song, everybody will dance. Because I, I, I found out mm-hmm. that, the, well, you may not remember, but there was this, um, there was Utna, which was like an association of, of uh, TV, African, African broadcasting houses, mm-hmm. state broadcasting houses. And we used to watch, that's how Ghanaians learned about Kanda Bongoman mm-hmm. and uh, Zibote, they used to show yeah, Zibote yeah, and so right, it was yeah, all on the Utna yeah. channel more mm, or less mm. and we used to watch it on, on GTV mm. and I found to my surprise that my mm. contemporaries, everybody knew the same songs, we mm. all knew Zibote, we all knew uh, Kandabungoman songs, Sai and Moni and um, Muchana, we all knew um, those, uh, we knew about the the Mauritius people and the way they used to dance. I can't remember any of their songs because <laughs> we never understood the mm-hmm. words or heard the words. Uh, I realized that we all knew those songs. My biggest surprise was knowing that or finding out that we all knew. If you love me, you go wait for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Every one of us knew it. Knew it. Every one of us knew it. I guess it was a, I think it was a Planned Parenthood or something. It was a, it was a. It was run across, a, a, yeah. Yes, a continent-wide mm-hmm. campaign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of us knew it. So I knew that if I played a song this would that be the area, response. that mm. would be the res- mm. response. And I went to him and eventually he was like, don't go. Stay so here. What song should <laughs> what I song play should next? I play? So wow. I started playing. So after that, I started um, um, DJing events. And at that time, YouTube had, had started hitting, you know, making waves. And all the music we needed, all the music we wanted was on YouTube. So I'd find, I'd find the music and mm. then would play it. But sometimes uh, the buffering would interrupt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then they would shout hey. Hey, so one watch. time some one time it happened that way and the music stopped because it was buffering yeah. and then one somebody said hey dj where's, why is the music stopped and then somebody said oh dj youtube <laughs> <laughs> they had caught you already <laughs> wow and then that became like my nickname name so whatever i was dj they would shout hey dj, DJ YouTube. youtube oh charlie <laughs> Beautiful memories right there, man. Wow. (sighs) And I love this. I love this, Kenny G. I mean, I grew up in Kumasi. But I love G-Bop. 
more yeah, than yeah, this. More than this. I grew yeah. up in Kumasi, and this was like, right. the, you know, back then on radio, advertisement wasn't like how it is now. Right. Back then, they would, it was more of like announcements, and so they would play this. would be like the industry that runs right. during the day. Right. Um, from 12 to like 1, they'll repeat this right. for about an hour, right. and then there'll be announcements on this. And I really loved radio. Back then, I'd buy my radio set. I'd walk to Malcolm at a right. doom, buy it, and then come back home. Two days, three days, it gets broken. I'd have to buy a new one. <laughs> and so, like, I really grew up on this particular one. Well, right, in right, between right. studying and working mm -hmm. for family, I'd mm -hmm. say working for family because you grew up in a family business. Yes. Um, did you keep yourself busy doing other stuff? Did you do any business on the side? Have you worked for anybody else apart from family? Um, no, I apart really. from a few, a couple of internships, mm -hmm. you done. which were academic related, mm -hmm. related to my course. Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't. You didn't. No, but I was um, quite involved in the theatre group wing of the French club at Legon. So mm -hmm. even after I finished, we'd go touring yeah. Ghana to um to act place and um, i remember especially tartuf also known as the the imposter mm. and i was i was a maid mm. uh, in that one a mm. very uh, bold <laughs> audacious maid, maid yeah. <laughs> the in one that knew her rights right <laughs> yes who could speak with the master mm. you mm. know had worked long periods mm. and could we mm. well, so we we acted over two years mm -hmm. we went to we did it in Accra, takwadi kumase and it was fun mm. do you remember the first salary you received <laughs> I don't remember how much it was, but let me tell you a story about my first salary. Talk to me. So when I finished, um, we finished in December because we ran the January to December mm -hmm. um, time mm -hmm. school ske schedule. And so in December, uh, when I came home for Christmas, my mom, my mom paid for my hair to get done. So I did my hair, my, my, my mom mm -hmm. paid for my, my perm. <laughs> <laughs> and then in January, we started, she paid for it as well. Mm -hmm. When I got my first salary, she said, now you're working. Now pay for pay it. Pay for it yourself. Wow. There's another side to it. So the whole of January, when, when I was working with my dad, at lunchtime, I'd go to him and then he'd take me out to lunch. Or if he couldn't mm -hmm. take me out then maybe the general manager would take me out or he'd give me money to go buy lunch at that time at that time he used to give me five thousand cds that's like 50 pesos now well but that then it that was, was yeah it was huge. it was quite a bit yeah. of money and i decided i was going to be i was going to be um, careful with the money so you know what i used to do i used to spend so i wouldn't order i wouldn't buy papaya and then there was this there was this i forgot what it was called there was this fast food joint at trust hours so the office was then located behind the holy spirit cathedral okay so in adabraka mm -hmm. so i decided i wasn't going to spend my money buying fast food mm -hmm. expensive, 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 expensive fast food, food yeah. yes so i'd walk all the way to champion champion house wow and buy the rice there the check check yeah, uh, well, um, wache, it's like, it was a normal mm -hmm. wache, um, rice and stew, rice and stew yeah. yes. Or then I'd go, there was a, there was a cluster of schools uh, near, so we were quite close to Originate. Mm -hmm. There was a cluster of schools near Originate then, and then I'd, there was a beans lady there, and then there was some wache lady and kinky around that area. So I'd do that, and then I'd buy myself a drink. So... I used to spend that 5,000 CDs on two days and, so and then on the extra. Wednesday I'd have a little bit. It would not be enough mm -hmm. to buy mm -hmm. everything because I'd probably buy myself mm -hmm. a drink or a biscuit or something. So on the third day I'd go and get more. Now after my first salary, the first day of work I go, I go to my dad at lunchtime and he's like, I'll see you too, okay. <laughs> <laughs> As long as just so, working with family, you know. He was like, "See, it's your car." You know when the salary comes. <laughs> wow. So then, so then, um, that five thousand CDs that I used to spend over two days mm -hmm. used to go for the week. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I spread it over the week. So Monday to Friday, five thousand mm -hmm. CDs. Instead of spending over two days, you see, when is your own money? Management. You see, oh, when is, when your, is your own, own money? money? You spend it twice. Yeah, you're different. <laughs> and I used this particular. Mm -hmm. This particular experience um, 
so my daughter, the older one, um, in 2019, mm. first him, she lost, she kept losing her water bottles. So by the middle of the term, she was using her seventh water bottle, which was my bottle. Mm -hmm. And I told her if she lost it Should or be. lost the cup, I'd use her money from her piggy bank to pay for it. She thought I was joking. She lost it. That day, when she told me she lost, the following morning when she was going to, I gave her another one of my bottles. And when I was picking her up, I made sure that I picked her up from school myself. I took her piggy bank along with me. When, we fin when I picked her up, we went to the shop. I, got one. I let her pick out which one she wanted. I took the money out of the picky bank, gave it to she her. She saw it? Yes. Gave it to her. To pay for it. To pay for mm. it. And she got the change for it. And we put it in the piggy bank. Mm. And she started crying. Now that is her money, dear, she's crying. Yes, she started crying. <laughs> Do you know that the following day when she went back to school, she went to look for... The other one? Yes. She found, she found one bottle. The, the last one that she had lost. She found it. And then... That's the bottle she still has now. Her, her last bottle, mm -hmm. she still has it. She still has it Yes, now. she finished the term with it and then started the following term with it until, um, <laughs> until the schools were closed down. And then she said, when it's your own money, yeah, you take it your attitude right. is different. Yes, it's, yeah. it's coming from your own pocket, so you have to make yes. sure it stays yes. up. Anyways, uh, shout going out to our Facebook viewers. Uh, good morning going out to you. Uh, Prospect Wea. Juvia Don DC is also watching. Yao Sebe Amuakon Ahinfi. Good morning, good night to you. Kwesi Atobra is also watching. Uh, Baba Baba Fusin Ibn Jabuni says, um, it's, okay, I'll, go, uh, I'll get to the questions in a bit. Um, Cecilia Fletcher says, Muta Baruka. Oh, Cecilia is a Azule, Azule. That's her nickname, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia, your nickname is on blast. <laughs> Wow. I still call her. You still that. call I, Azule, I, I right? I did tell you that you, you whenever make sure I it called them, yes, I make sure it stays. So uh, my other classmate, Gloria Dubo, for sure is called Coach. So, <laughs> so Gloria will give you a name and I would make sure it would stick. Wow. <laughs> Chief Enforcement <laughs> Officer. Anyways, um, now your flagship program, right? Yes. Um, National Science and Math Squares has been running for 28 years. Yes. 28 good years. Um, what, in your opinion, uh, makes it such a resilient brand? What is the secret? There are a number of factors. It's not one thing. Mm. On one hand, you have, you have a program that is, is in itself mm -hmm. a really good program, a really good brand mm. that addresses an urgent and important need. So by itself, by itself yeah. it it's a great program. Mm. Then you have the schools and their interest in because it addresses mm -hmm. or helps them address a need. I have been told about, um, some heads have told me about mm -hmm. how they started the science departments in their mm -hmm. schools through the NSF. National Science and Math Schools, yeah. So you have the enthusiasm of the, the heads mm -hmm. of the schools. You have um, the our facilitators mm -hmm. and our sponsors who have been wonderful to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, different sponsors at different times, but all believing in the products, the brand, and supporting us. Mm. And then you have the fans who, you know, the, the rivalry, the healthy rivalry has existed in many, for, over, for many, many years, but it was largely sports. Yes. Yeah. It was, uh, well, I wouldn't say it was largely sports, but it was more evident when there were sporting uh, activities, activities yes. because that's when you know it's intercourse super mm -hmm. zoo mm -hmm. but there wasn't any real one that was national so that you could pit presec against prempe yeah. or against infant spam or anything like the sporting that sporting activities were usually regional regional yes 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 yes, yes, yes. Mm. so uh, the program also had because of the keenness of the competition and so on also built these national or um, rivalries mm. and then you also have the people behind it the resilience mm. and perseverance of the people behind it because um, uh, it, as you well know in 2010 and 2011 we didn't have the we didn't yeah the program yeah. at all and we didn't give up hope we tried we we were looking everywhere for for help and we we found help uh, from CHAS, that's the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools. At that time, it was headed by Mr. Furiji, who was the headmaster of Accra Academy. Mm. And um, the GES 
the GES board and the GES uh, management were also very, very helpful. Instrumental in, instrumental yeah. in that instituting mm. the levy for schools mm. to um, for students to pay. So uh, it originally started as one one Ghana CD per per child mm -hmm. for a year, going to CHAS, out of which we were paid, and then the schools also. Um, said that they didn't have any money to train their school, their mm -hmm. students, because they have to camp them. Yes, they, they have, have to, to yeah. feed them. Mm -hmm. They have to buy books, Practical and work. resources, and yes. I remember back in school, they they had different dining times. They ate different food. Which school? <laughs> Kumasi Anglican. Oh right, yes. right, right, right. Yes. Supercast. Supercast. Great supercast. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, and so. Um, it was increased to five Ghana CDs mm -hmm. per child per term. Mm -hmm. So one term would stay with the school mm -hmm. for their and preparations. The next one would go then to the Chas other thing. two would go to Chas, mm -hmm. out of which we were given what mm -hmm. was needed mm -hmm. to have the program mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. Wow. Since 2013, right, um, mm -hmm. you have been credited with a lot of, you know, innovations. I mean, bringing on board a lot of innovations and excitement to the National Science and Mass Quiz, um, which now includes the Science Festival itself, as you mentioned, right. uh, for which you are executive producer. Yeah. Um, what will you attribute the success to? Where does the ideas come from? It's you. We know it's you, but where does inspiration come from? How do you gather all these ideas and innovations? Inspiration comes from different places, mm. um, from my team members mm. especially, mm. because um, going on, going on uh, social media was not original. It was not my idea. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my idea. But when it was presented to me, I gave it the support mm -hmm. that it needed, and that's how we should. You didn't feel you're it. not. You're. You're. you're um, it, it's my philosophy. Mm -hmm. I, I. I always say, jokingly say that whatever my my staff say about me, they can't say I don't listen, mm -hmm. because. Um, Social media, yes, I'm young, but I don't understand it the way they do mm -hmm. from their mm -hmm. youthful mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you don't listen, innovation is not from one place. And I, I always say this, that um, it's very normal to come to my office when we are having uh, an NSMQ planning committee meeting or any other planning for our projects meeting and I present an idea and it's a sh it's shut down. A client service executive can shut down my idea. True. If you can present superior superior um, arguments for why it should not be, should done, not be or done or yeah. why something else should be done. Mm. Perfect. I have, mm. I have no problem with it at all. I don't think that uh, <laughs> you know, we'll no, about about mm. no. Mm. Mm. I like that. That's, that's so, very true. So because of that, I'm able to get ideas from all sorts of mm. places, sometimes from collaborators, from family, from friends. Um, ideas come from all sorts of places. Mm. And, and so I, I don't say no unless it cannot really feasibly cannot mm. be done mm. or there's a very, very strong reason mm. why it cannot be done mm. or should not be done. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. when an idea is presented, you present. I I I try to encourage mm -hmm. that mm. healthy mm. Uh, dialogue so that people can see whatever mm. they think and it works. If we mm. try it and it works, it becomes part of mm. the how we work, yeah. how we do our, our stuff. Mm. So the the bit about, for example, mentorship. Mm -hmm. It came from my interaction with a former contestant, um, 96, uh, 96, Augustus 96, Dr. Levi mm -hmm. Ankara, and he was telling me, but before then, I had noticed that sometimes the students were a little um, tensed up, a little stage fright would get in the way, so I used to speak with them before, before you get on did mm. get on mm. and when we were doing the regionals i'd mm. ask the team leaders to speak with them so they and and we had we had an incident was it 2012 or 2013 somebody fainted i heard about that and so we wanted to talk to them so that they would understand that it's not the end of the world if you don't win it's serious business oh. <laughs> honestly I, I remember back in mm. school so the brilla squad would prepare and the entire school would 
give their support yes. and it's it was such a disappointment if your school was kicked out yes and so it was it was serious business i could feel personally i could feel the pressure on the students yes. i feel these days things are a bit loosened up thanks to social media and of course the efforts that you guys put in yes um, we, the students we, we 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 actually have a team mm. of psychologists mm. who work on the students mm throughout mm. the competition mm. to help them deal with the pressure during our time people used to cry i remember oh, yes. people would cry yes, yes. some would even vow not to leave the auditorium for their schools because they they feared the kind of you know bashments they would receive mm, see, but, yes you know, so but, we, we've been trying to deal yeah, with that by having the mm. psychologists come on mm. board. but i used to do that myself mm, personally and um so dr levi ankara told me mm. about his experiences and um being tongue-tied mm. <laughs> on stage and i felt that his experience on the program mm -hmm. was going to be helpful to mm. those a, a lot more helpful to the contestants than whatever i would say because he had been on it and could share mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. practical knowledge about it than i could so i invited him to come and speak with the students mm -hmm. and speak with them in a you know about his experiences yeah. and encourage them really yeah. to 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 do well and that's how the mentorship program began Big. so mm. now now it's not just to speak with them to encourage them we bring on um professionals mm -hmm. mostly science and technology related um areas yeah. we work in mostly science yeah. and technology related areas to speak with the students about their careers be, so, so be, beyond the quiz yes so mm. so careers in science and maths you know all kinds of things that their background i mean the students background in, in science and maths opens them up mm -hmm. to and sometimes they are not exactly science people but have very useful ideas to share with the students so we've had all sorts of people there we've had chemical engineers the usual because you know uh, Somehow, somehow, when students are studying science, they think they must automatically end up in the medical school. But not that's everybody true. is suited for medicine. Mm. That's one. Not, and of course, you can't take everybody into medical school. So the idea is to showcase to them, to broaden their horizons, mm -hmm. so they see the wide range of opportunities, of opportunities yeah. for them. Yeah. We've, even had a, we've even had a science journalist mm -hmm. come in, so the person was a, um, well, a health journalist, kind of, he's um, a pharmacist with journalistic training. So now that's nice. Yes, yeah, so after, after the, the scientists have, have uh, done their studies and written their their findings mm, in their research and all that their research findings he breaks it down to the language that you and we, i yes we we'll understand, can understand. Mm, mm, that's and beautiful yes so we've had all so we've had psychiatric nurses come in mm. we've had all sorts of uh, different kinds of mm. engineers material mm. science we've had our quiz mistresses also mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. with the students because they are professionals yes. in in those areas that's how mentorship mm. was born mm. um with the with the picnic which we have renamed nsmq Intercor, it was actually an idea from this the the contingents was they complained that on sundays we don't record on sundays mm -hmm. we record monday to saturday yeah. and on sundays there's nothing much for them to do they wanted something interesting yeah. to do to occupy them themselves and that's how that was born mm. and uh, the psychic fair I mean, we take feedback from mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. and um, from 2013, every year we do we do a survey yeah. while the competition is going on, properly done. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I didn't like basic stats back in uni. Back in uni, <laughs> but I had to do I had to do something like that for communication studies mm. as part of my course. Mm -hmm. I had to do that when I went to to the US because uh, so for the for my thesis from legon it was a it was a more quantitative yeah, yeah outlook approach and then from ohio the one i did for ohio was a more qualitative mm -hmm. approach so it's interesting that it's only until two years ago that we started taking on production assistance with with a statistics background, background to do 
yeah. to do the service. Mm -hmm. But I was I used to teach it myself. You used to do it, handle it yes, yourself. Yes, yes. So when we had the before the competition would begin, when everybody was in lo was on location, the production assistants who were responsible for mentorship, because we evaluate each mentor, mm -hmm. we want to see if the the message that we were bringing actually went down, if the students were paying attention, what they retained, we we do it for every one of them. So you need the people to understand how how um, the statistics, how it works, how how to code answers, the answers, mm -hmm. how to input into SPSS, how to get the the results out, and how to write a research report. So I used to teach that. Mm. until about three years ago yeah there's there's a general notion <laughs> out there that any well all the people involved uh with the production of nsmq are teachers or have teaching background or mm -hmm. from the teaching background is it true no not all of no, them no. i mean you just mentioned that it was until recently that you even started getting on production assistance with stats background yes yes well, it was general i mean mm. we had uh production assistance you only had to um apply uh, right to, to say you wanted mm -hmm. to be a production assistant mm -hmm. and uh, so we started from mm -hmm. a small group of people that we knew and they telling their friends mm -hmm. about it so you send in your cv mm -hmm. and an application letter and then and so that we know what the backgrounds of everybody mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. so we know where to place yeah. you your strengths because if we are looking yes exactly if mm -hmm. we're looking for for peas to do the sci-tech fair you want someone who's well, part of the SciTech, one of the attractions of the SciTech Fair is that there's a stand where anybody at all, so an eight-year-old, a five-year-old mm. can go in there and conduct a simple experiment under supervision. Mm. And we need PAs to handle that. So mm. you want somebody who is uh, a student, maybe a level 300 or 400, or even a TA in any one of the science departments, to handle mm. that so we ask them to send in their, yeah. their cv so we know where to place them yeah. yeah yeah wow that's beautiful now moving on but still staying on social media mm. um with the impact nsmq has had these days based on you know the the, the inclination of the social media aspect of a of of it in your opinion do you think the business community right of nsmq the business community is fully utilizing um digital media uh, these days well, digital media is still evolving. Mm -hmm. It's still evolving. We, if, even for us, we are not using everything that we, we could use. So there's still a lot of room for improvement. But it's... it's we're getting better. Yes, we are, we are doing well in terms of uh, using the digital space. Mm. It's, it's getting better. Mm. Uh, more and more, we are beginning to understand, excuse me, mm -hmm. how it works. Yeah. And... Um, what what how to navigate it mm -hmm. is a navigation yeah, that is yeah. a bit um, uh, difficult but mm. yes we are learning and more and more you 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 are we're coming across courses mm -hmm. being organized for for professionals in that area because i think in the beginning it was, it was a bit difficult to conceive of having employing somebody to sit on the internet mm -hmm. I get it. and like you know mm -hmm. kind of like play on the internet yeah. but these days we're, seeing, yeah, we're yes. advancing more towards that yeah we're seeing the benefits that you can reach people beyond mm -hmm. your locality yeah yes and i think that we are doing well there's a lot that we more that we mm -hmm. could do but mm -hmm. we're, we are getting there what would you describe as the biggest challenge uh you know for national science and mass squeeze now um from your from your office biggest challenge <laughs> Ah, it always, it always has and always will be the question of funding. Mm. Because if you have sponsorships, how long will this, those sponsorships run mm. for? And it's like every time you are fighting an existential battle, mm. right? Because it's a big, it's a major project. Most people don't know how big it really is when it's on location when you we are on location we are on location for a month mm -hmm. and that's just the national competition like i said we record monday to saturday we record three contests a day monday to saturday so and you're with them throughout yes i mean i actually 
move office kind of <laughs> wow and uh, we set up office there and we are on location and we work throughout the time um, there's no there's no day we don't work even on the sundays somebody's doing something because um when you have the contingent contingent that they have to be fed mm -hmm. You have to make sure that everything is working well. Mm -hmm. It's somebody's job to make mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the food gets there on time. It's but you have to supervise all that. Somebody mm -hmm. has to make sure that the, the, the it's, it's of good quality, that we are getting um, our money's worth, that we are feeding those we are supposed to be feeding and not extras. You know, there's a whole lot that goes mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. with that, um, with, the, with the production. When we're there. Somebody has to take care of the the residents to make sure that people sign out yeah. properly leave the keys mm. that we know who's gone out because it affects the meals mm. you know that's no, a that's a lot of work no uh, who's coming in who's leaving yes and you 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 have to uh, like i said we um we evaluate all the mentors so there's constantly there's work to be done mm. someone has to put together the brochures mm. that we we share out for the launch and the, the closing ceremony, which mm -hmm. contains all the information mm -hmm. about that year's competition. It's someone's job to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's always a lot mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. always. That, that se seems like a, a, a lot of work, you know, on your shoulder, but you guys it make is. it look like soft work. <laughs> I mean, last year's <laughs> event was very, very beautiful. I missed all the challenges, COVID and all that. I, I actually witnessed the one at Legon. I think it was the final one. Yes. Wow. The fi I, I was amazed because, you know, we moved, <laughs> we moved and throughout, mm. the, we moved location mm. and even throughout the campaign because we wanted to, to Lower discourage, down, yeah. discourage the crowds. Mm. We didn't even advertise our venues. And people were there. They were there. It took, it they took, found us. It took, it took my personal assistant and I about an hour to get in. We had the pass. We had the invitation to come right. in as media, right. but it took us an extra hour right. Right. to get in. And then when we got in, at some point, the security agencies had to just beg them. They had to plead with them. See, you know what? We can't take any more, right. uh, you know, numbers in there. But right. it's all because of the beauty right. of, you know. There was a truck outside mm -hmm. with with um so it was it was connected so they could watch it from mm -hmm. outside but they didn't want they to, didn't do they wanted they wanted to experience to real life yes what, what should we expect from national science mass quiz in the coming years oh. let's say next year fireworks as usual <laughs> <laughs> fireworks as usual it's it's our mantra to mm. always innovate mm. so um there'll be definitely new things mm -hmm. that will be coming up mm -hmm. Uh, I can't say yes, um, exact all everything right now, but we are still working mm -hmm. on. Uh, we reach, we are doing the balloting for this year's. Yep. We are always looking to improve the experience, mm. the experiences of the of the the, the contingents, mm. the experiences of mm. our fans mm. as they watch. We are always looking uh, for ways of improving them, and uh, I think that adds to the charm of the competition because every mm. year there's something different, mm. and you're not quite sure. What is going, what to, is going to be different, see definitely. Yes. And I, I know for sure that you, National Science and Mass Quiz, and of course, Prime Time always spreads its wings across. Um, in recent years, YFM has been uh, a partner. We've been on there, and so we, we yes. wish you guys the best. Of course, we're ready to also support with our input. Thank we're you. all about the youth. Anything the youth loves, we love it. Thank and you. so we wish you the best, of course, you and the team, all of you guys. Still on stem right. science uh, and the studies out here what is your general impression about um teaching and and, and learning of stem in, in basic and second cycle schools across the nation now currently what do you think what's your general imp are we doing better are we growing as a nation well um i haven't seen what the new curriculum looks oh, like okay. but i have been told that it's more practical oriented mm. and that's exactly what mm. we need mm. um more practicals mm. but you know that the reagents and so <laughs> on are expensive mm -hmm. and so on. So one of the things that's so spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spoil it. We had originally wanted to do it last year, mm -hmm. but because of the closure of the schools mm -hmm. and so on, the teachers argued that they had not had enough time mm -hmm. with their teams mm -hmm. to be able to prepare them for practical mm -hmm. lessons. Mm -hmm. So there's a practical element that's coming to the quiz. This wow! Is so now they can around. actually get their hands on and, and yes. try things out yes so it will be done outside mm. and pre-recorded and then just insert and then would um would watch it 
uh, on while the quiz is going on you will see when it comes to that round how well your team did mm. when they come when when they got into mm. the the lab mm. and we hope that by introducing this this aspect of the competition the lab work mm -hmm. um it would it would um create a, a demand for that that would mm. engender mm. a supply mm. 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 so that we we work as much as possible on the practical mm. aspect of science education right from the the beginning well ss ss mm. shs mm -hmm. uh, level uh, one of the reasons why we incorporated that the stand the experiential stand at the scientific mm. is because we want to build the the curiosity or the interest mm -hmm. in science in mm -hmm. children um or from in p the general public from a young age so mm. um last year we couldn't have the SciTech because of the the covid but in 2019 we had children as young as four and five come in and do a, um, a simple experiment testing for starch mm -hmm. and uh, testing for protein mm -hmm. it was they were so excited mm -hmm. about it and it encouraged us to to do a lot more in fact when you go to that stand there are different levels it's not just for children yeah so the children do those testing for starch that kind of thing um but we've been doing more advanced things like um um dissection of a rabbit mm. we've done a dissection of a uh, a toad and these are far more practical things yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and and um and any any visitor mm -hmm. to the fair can come and take part mm. in that experiment so that you have the interest growing in children you know from from an early age onwards mm. i i feel that i have been to a science fair like that before uh, even though i didn't i didn't um uh play any role in that it's it made me think mm -hmm. about science. It was only the math that... You opened your eyes to a lot of yes, things. it was yeah. only the math that didn't work mm. for me. But <laughs> when it came to core science, my favorite was, was actually chemistry. I think that if really? I had... Yes. I loved organic chemistry. <laughs> I, For some reason, yes. I hated it. Oh. When I you had it. to open the sequence my, and, and yeah. do the calculations. I balancing and equations. The balancing the... I loved that. And so I apologize to, to, to GS. <laughs> But I was always stretching my neck over that. Whenever it comes to that, and I always got it wrong because then uh, my sight was bad. And so stealing, you know, in the examination, my teacher would always say, you, you can't even steal. When you try, it won't work. But I still try and stretch my neck to get it. Thing was, see, some of us didn't really understand it. I, I think also, I think also, one of the challenges of education everywhere mm -hmm. it's not just here oh, yeah, in ghana yeah. i experienced that even uh, in ohio i had a lecturer who was really good at, we had we had also he had won awards for 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 his his um his studies his research work and his, he taught us uh, quantitative mm. methods he couldn't get us to understand what he was talking about mm. So I think that sometimes there's the problem, th there are two of them. Uh, sometimes the teacher himself or herself may not understand, Fully understand. Yes, it enough to be able to impart the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, it's a challenge for them. Mm -hmm. So then they can't, they they can't, can't, really give, they can't give you yeah. what, you, what mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. That's true. It goes back to that. They can't give you what they mm -hmm. don't have. They don't really understand mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So they can't let you understand mm. it. They can't break it down mm. in a language mm. that would help you mm. to understand mm. it. And I think um, it's a major problem. Mm. It's a major problem. Well, one final thing I want us to talk about on STEM has to do with girl-child education, girls right. in STEM. Right. Um, what are some of the efforts you think the county should put in to ensure that we get a lot more of our ladies to join in um, the extended you know wings of stem you know studying in the second cycle uh, going further you know getting involved in national science and math quiz beyond that you know uh, get, getting into engineering and the rest what do you think should be done well i think a lot is being done, being done already i mm -hmm. mean um it, it wasn't like that in the past mm -hmm. but i think a lot is being done mm -hmm. where you have a lot of um uh, people both on the public and private side you know involved mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. girl mm -hmm. 
child education science mm -hmm. education and um, I think that the first step which is what we've been trying to do all these years by having a quiz mistress mm -hmm. who's a scientist yeah. is is um, making sure that they have role models they mm -hmm. can see themselves mm -hmm. doing something like that they can see someone who looks like them yep. a representation is a is very very, very important, important yes wow representation is very very important and breaking the misconception that oh science is difficult mm. is for boys and 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 stuff like that there's still work to be done i mean mm. different people are but we're doing, getting there as a nation but yeah. um, bits and bits. so you have both on the public and private side working mm. on it and um i think there's a lot more awareness about the challenges now and i think that there's there's a whole lot more that could mm. be done mm. and um we are doing our bit we are doing our bit encouraging the girls because you see the christmas trees and it's, it's, it's really working like it's really working i mm. remember back in school so i went to a mixed school uh, mm -hmm. Kumasi Angekan, and I, it was quite fascinating seeing ladies doing science Right. So back then we'd have, let's say, a class of 40 with 35 of them being guys, boys, mm -hmm. and then the, the five being ladies. And it was super, I mean, when the science students are called and you see the ladies in there. But then recently I went back and uh, it's almost as if it's just a, a perfect proportion. Half of them are ladies, right. half of them are, right. are guys. And it's, it's normal. Right. We're normalizing right. it. It's right. normal. We're moving we forward. Yeah, we're get, bit by bit. Bit by bit. Mm. We're getting mm. there. Mm. We're getting Fi there. Final things I want to find out from you. What comes to mind when you, when you, when you think about women and leadership? I think women make it the best leaders. <laughs> you sure, right? <laughs> oh, yes. 100%. No. Um, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we are more detail oriented and mm. they say the devil is in the details. <laughs> we are more detail oriented. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think we are able, we're more able to do different tasks, you know, multitasking. Multitask, yeah. But I, 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 and we also bring a, a softer touch. Mm. I think we also bring a softer touch, a more uh, human touch to whatever we do. So, um, we are particular but we bring a softer touch mm -hmm. to it um and but i think we are generally better organized mm. generally better organized mm. than 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 the men are mm. not that i'm bashing them i know i know i do get it, I do get <laughs> but, but but i these believe are, these are, these are, are qualities yeah. that that generally women women possess mm. maybe because of our upbringing mm -hmm. when you're at home and you're growing up you have to help with the household chores you have to help take care of younger siblings mm. the boys are not tasked that much it's so really expected some, of us yeah. yeah so you have uh, in many homes when it's even time to pound the fufu that's when the boys go and play football and mm -hmm. basketball mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. so leaving the girls to to manage the girls stay at home and learn to manage the home mm. their siblings and mm. everything it, mm. it, it has research has shown that when children do house chores yes it builds leadership qualities in them mm -hmm. because the child has to do the chore every day for i don't know how many years of of his or her life so the child learns to get the job done as there's as the child grows and the, and the child is doing other house chores you know you have to find a way to balance you must do all your work your house chores you must and do your school do work you, yeah. you must still find time mm -hmm. to to play mm -hmm and do other things that interest you so the upbringing has a lot to do with, with with this and i think that generally the women are miles ahead in terms of organization mm. Mm. you know when there's something to be done they say well a man also we get the cooking we'll get done, done yeah. we get the food blah blah and everybody just comes and mm. eats after that there's clearing up there's cleaning you know um these are everyday things that we do mm -hmm. and when given the opportunity we are able to move it into the corporate mm. uh, environment when given the when given the opportunity so yes. the opportunities must first and foremost be given uh we must open up we must empower our women yes it's yes. been there for the guys me i always say this has been there for the guys for a long time it's time we open our wings it's time we normalize women taking on things that we deem are men oriented 
It won't spoil nothing. Oh. It actually improves. You find very capable women, very, very they capable are. women to do it. If you look around, you will mm. find them. Mm. Yes, mm. we are here. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. We did, we did decide. Anyway, so uh, one thing I also want to find out from you, all right, your advice to um, young women at the start of motherhood, that in particular, because you, you have a lot of things you do, but still you've been able to finesse motherhood. You, you, you make it seem like soft work, as I mentioned. Wow. What is your <laughs> advice to them? Organize yourself. Mm. Stay organized. Mm. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's really difficult. And, um, but it's not, it's, it's very doable too. Um, I think that more and more there are people doing mentoring of young women, young, you know, mm. career women. And um, you need a support system mm -hmm. because you can't take the children to work. But you need to get to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you need to take care of them somehow and sometimes you have domestic issues maybe no help at home mm -hmm. and it's really really difficult it gets difficult sometimes yeah. really difficult so you need a support you need a support network and you need to organize yourself mm -hmm. so that you can give attention to the work mm -hmm. and you can give attention to your family mm -hmm. um, all right I, 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 I would want to talk especially about women entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. Uh, let me share an experience with you. So right. in 2016, um, I had a baby right in the middle of NSMQ. She's 11th J June. And you know June is yeah, NSMQ. June is like a busy, busy month for you. Yes. And she was born on 11th June. So I spent the months leading to that really preparing and making sure that that um i could i could um take the time off without worrying too much about what was going to happen i'm i'm very hands hands on um so i i i, I tried to prepare as much as possible but something came up about 10 days after I had it, and I had it by cesarean section. Wow. About 10 days after I had a, I, a client called, um, something had changed, they needed their reports. And when it's NSMQ time, it's all hands on deck at the office. Even if you are not part of the client service team, you even if to. you are, yes. Um, even if, if you are HR, <laughs> you, you have to get involved, yeah. That yeah. you must do. Uh, of course, it's, it's a big, big project, and, and we need all the help we can get. And so my team had done the job the week before we began NSMQ, but there hadn't been any time to write the, the reports. Mm -hmm. We had expected to have a lot more time because of the contract duration, but the international, the international bosses were coming into town and needed... They needed, all, yeah. they, yes, they mm. needed to apprise them of what they had done and so on. And my team was busy, busy, busy. I couldn't add... Onto their stress. No. Mm. So what did I do? I got behind my, my laptop. I asked them for the details, the things. So I asked them for a short... Ten writing. days after your cesarean section. Yes. Wow. So with the second one, I didn't even go on maternity leave. I can't even say I went on maternity leave. Because from then, I from that the tenth day i'd go to the office two or three days in the week so did if there were some weeks when i didn't go at all but usually two days in a week maybe even three days in a week until i was able to resume fully and i got the i got the report done i got it done hmm. there were times when the baby would cry so she'd be in in her courts by me mm -hmm. i'd be sitting in my nightgown working 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 till we got the the activity report and the final report all done all done and submitted in time one of my motivations also was that we were short we were cash trapped and i didn't know how we were going to pay the staff for the f for that month get an extra yeah. and since once we submitted the reports we were going to get paid you have it to had it. it had to be done mm. so i put the baby when she was crying fussing too much i'd put her on my lap and I'd continue with my typing. 
because I needed to get the work done. And I, I say this because when people are uh, talking about being their own bosses and being entrepreneurial and so on, they, and deciding when to do what, what they don't think about is that you are the last man or woman standing. Mm. And that's what I want mm. to, to show with this story. You are the last man or woman standing. When no one else can do it, you must do it. Because you, everybody depends on you for mm. survival. Mm. Everybody. Everybody. So you can't afford to take holidays when there's work to be done. Mm. You must put in extra effort. So yes, I have a lot of leeway in deciding how I want to do my stuff. Like I told you, I often supervise my children um, work in the morning before I go to work. So I can show up at uh, work at 11, no questions asked. Nobody's going to ask me anything. But the flip side is that whatever work needs to be done if i'm sitting in my 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 house i try not to work late mm. at the office to take the work home which means after the kids have gone to bed then i sit and do my work i often sit and do work till morning my staff know when you wake up in the morning you or you get to the office you check your email and there's an email there from 2 a.m or 3 a.m or 4 a.m it means i didn't sleep i was working so that's the flip side you are the last man or standing, woman standing yeah. so you can't afford to take the liberties that your staff can take your staff have to be there from this time to that time beyond that there there are times when they have to put themselves up out a little bit but you can't demand certain things of them imagine if i hadn't been the the leader or the managing director of the company if i'd been just another regular staff member could my boss have no, told me mm -mm. nursing mother 10 days after 10 days after the cesarean mm. section get up and write a report we no, need that no nah. but because you were the last woman standing exactly thank you so much thank it's, you so much it's Nana. very difficult so um when we are encouraging people yes entrepreneur you must be an entrepreneur be your own boss there's a price to be paid mm. for that freedom so maybe you have freedom during the day to decide okay, but you, I want pay to it in a, today. you pay it in a harder you, currency on the other side do, yes you have to mm. you have to because the company must survive by all means by all means mm. and while i'm talking about this i'll touch on this also i've 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 heard a few comments or had a few people say oh but you as i i've been that i know i'm on now is it the truth of the matter is no matter how well the company is running before you take over mm -hmm. you can't let the it, it, the, the ship can't sink on your watch mm. it can't so even if everything all the figures were good and so on you must do better mm. you must do better mm. you must keep it running mm. and you must do better and sometimes it's a little more difficult because um you may have the 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 strength of youth but not always the experience and in any case things change whatever was working 10 years ago 15 years ago it's not the same thing it's outmoded now yeah so the industry has changed a lot i mean if you look at the advertising space at the time my father started prime time in 1993 how many advertising agencies were there there were only a handful i don't think there were more than five or seven of them in existence now with the advent of technology you even have car boots mm -hmm agencies the person has all his equipment in his car, his car with some even <laughs> operate from their bedrooms exactly mm. so, so the, the 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 things have changed mm. so the 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 problems have also changed mm. the 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 risks and threats have also changed and you must change along and find solutions to them to be able to keep things running so it's not as easy as oh yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, no, 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 not at all. Mm. And 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 at the time I joined, those were difficult times. Remember, mm. it's our flagship yeah, program, and yeah. it didn't come on in 2010 mm. or 2011. I came back in 2009, mm. and uh, it didn't come back till 2012. And things had to change. Mm. You know, we had to change how we were doing it. 
we had to freshen it up, change how the the the, the rounds. Mm -hmm. And you see that every year we are doing something. So yeah. the speed race didn't exist before 2016, mm -hmm. uh, but now it's an it integral is, yeah. part of yeah. of the competition. And so you, you need to add on to make it change, change and adapt to time. You have to mm. change and adapt mm. to time. Mm. Yes. And and that in itself mm. is a very, very mm. difficult job. Mm. And you have the added pressure of everybody expecting that, oh, your father did it. After You're this. supposed to do it to this point as well. Yes, mm. because uh, he didn't let... The, so you have to take on the dream and mm. make it your mm. own mm. and fight for it mm. to stay. Mm. So... It's a different kind of mm -hmm. difficulty from starting from scratch. Mm. And this one, you can't say, you can't say that uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if you, <laughs> there's no. Yeah, leeway on that. You Thank you so much, Narekia. Very inspiring story, I must say. I mean, we've learned so much. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for spending time with us this morning on thank the Wiley Debo series. And if you thank didn't you know I was this talkative, now you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it. I love it. I love it. As you see, you are not a talkative one when you're saying it's making sense. <laughs> no, honestly. You realize they call people talkatives when okasaka, okasa, okasa bieni. But yours makes sense because it's backed by experience and we are thankful for that, of course. Oh, um, I'd like to extend a big... Makes me feel better. Yes. Th <laughs> big thank you to Prime Time Limited for allowing you to come because I know they had to say yes before, you know, you came through. Thank you so much for um, your time this morning. We're thank truly inspired and we're looking forward to having you back sometime soon because of time i might have to pardon you on the uh the music bit the singing bit so i'll just let that go now i know for sure that the next nsmq you come back to the studio it will be me and <laughs> rev that'll be here to talk to you so we'll definitely have time for you uh you know on that but wish you the very best thank you, know, you the rest of the, all your endeavors all the activities much. you're involved in your family family life everything just wish you the very best in there and keep inspiring all of us especially the ladies thank keep you. inspiring us to do more with our lives can i say some thank yous no problem great so i'd first like to say a very very big thank you to my parents mm. for this opportunity for even knowing how to direct me because mm. remember i told you that this is not what i wanted yeah. to do and they had to to, to direct me and take my, my my disappointment and you know point me out point me in the right direction i i'm really grateful for them mm. to them for the support that they give me both mm. personal mm -hmm. and business uh wise to my family the wider extended family for mm. the ideas and the support financial and so on that they they give me i want to say a really really big thank you to the ges for all the years that they have supported us um starting from my father's time mm -hmm. to mine mm -hmm. and even being the main sponsor for the program for these number of years i want to say a big thank you to chas for bringing it back and supporting us through because without them we couldn't have gone back mm -hmm and the heads of the schools the teachers mm. the students the contestants who keep this yeah. competition going year after year i'd like to say a really big thank you to the my team of consultants and mm. the and the quiz mistresses for keeping the quality of the competition going and for all the efforts that they put into it i'd like to say a really really big thank you to all our other sponsors mm. to absa bank and to um, Goyal and GCB, Prudential Life Insurance, to all the other, Dano Milk, I mean last mm -hmm. year's, they, they were on board, they were on board, they, they did, uh, Newmont supported us to, to the individual sponsors who gave us awards for the, the, the contestants. Mm -hmm. I want to say a really big thank you to Multimedia, they've made a world of difference mm -hmm. to the program. Thank you to YFM, thank you to City FM. I haven't forgotten you <laughs> at all. Yes, they, they were there for us when, when things were tough. We, I'm really, really grateful to them. Mm. Thank you to Primetime staff for you know, the engagement, for mm. putting, mm. because the work requires that you, lot, yeah. you stretch mm. yourself mm. over and over and over again. Um, thank you very much for, for, for the sacrifices that mm -hmm. you make to make sure that we, we continue to thrive. Mm. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my husband, Dr. Ivan Stechiankuma, sorry, mm -hmm. for his support. He's, he's a great dad and he relieves me. There are times when, mm -hmm. you, you asked me a question about the children and, uh, 
and there are times when mommy is not there daddy has to be there and daddy has to be there mm. and 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 i don't mean there as in physically yeah only yeah there are mornings when i am just tired mm -hmm. and i need to rest and he makes sure that the kids don't bother me he mm -hmm. occupies them feeds them does everything i mean even with the the first one when when she was uh only a month old and it was nsmq time i left him i left the baby with him all day mm -hmm. bathed, f fed the child i did everything I, he's he's a hands-on dad and he's been an excellent support mm -hmm. to me and i appreciate that um, his ideas you know all the support professional and 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 otherwise that he gives I, my sisters wonderful support to me mm -hmm and everybody every other helper who has come my way i want to say a really big thank you to you all for mm. for for your for your support and your help mm. and it's made my story worth listening yes. to <laughs> yes. thank you so much Nanekia. Yeah. so that was managing director of prime time limited <laughs> mrs Nanekia bwajua and komasari she joined us yes aka buta baruka <laughs> <laughs> to join us on the Boss series today. Yeah, it's very... hey, with that one. <laughs> I know, I know, right? So, guys, um, we just have to take an extra, uh, you know, time on this. Apologies to the Shout on Y crew. Had to steal your time a bit, but it was very, very important, very, very beneficial.